Welcome to Altium Designer PCB Introduction, as we continue following our design from schematic capture to PCB layout. In this module, we will address the basic PCB preferences. Opening up the PCB preferences, we see there are a number of subfolders. The general folder has a few important settings. Let's start with Online DRC. When checked, the Online DRC provides live checking and feedback on the PCB through generating live highlighting for DRCs. This can be helpful when performing placement as well as routing with active feedback guiding the layout engineer's efforts. Clicking Apply or OK will save the updated setting. One quick example of online DRC is illustrated by overlapping two components when moving one. The green overlay error markings indicate a DRC violation. Right-clicking on the error overlay brings up a pop-up menu with the violations option to provide the error details. One thing to note, even with online DRC checking disabled, trace routing will still follow the rules. It just won't highlight errors such as component collisions. Running DRC error checks is always recommended prior to releasing a PCB for fabrication. We will run DRC checks in a later module. Turning our attention back to the general preferences, we see auto pan options that allow us to adjust the speed of the auto panning when moving components. The polygon rebuild is a useful option allowing for the automatic repouring of any polygon that is affected by an edit, like adding or removing a track where the polygon exists, or when moving a component within the polygon pour. There are a few options for object selection snapping in the PCB. Snap to center causes the crosshairs for the mouse to snap to the object's reference point. Normally pin 1, or the center of the object, depending on how the object was created. If this is not checked, then the place you select an object locates the crosshairs during the moving. I generally keep this enabled to ensure that the objects stay on grid. With Snap to Center checked, you can also add Smart Component Snap to allow the mouse to jump to the nearest pad of the associated component that you are trying to select and move. I generally don't use this option, but it can be helpful if you are focused on placing of a component using a particular pad for reference as opposed to its center. To speed up selection, one helpful option is the Shift Click to Select Preference. With that checked, the user can define which primitives require adding the Shift key when selecting. The primitives that require the additional Shift key for selection can be set up with the pop up menu here. This can disable auto selection options for overlapping primitives, like, for example, a component within a polygon. Without the Shift key, clicking on C3 only selects the capacitor but holding down the Shift key and then clicking on C3 allows us to pick C3 or the polygon. Hitting the F1 key while focused on the general preferences will bring up a more detailed description for the various options. Consider exploring them if you're interested in diving deeper. Moving to the Display folder, we will start with the settings shown. I normally have the Highlight in Full checked to really bring out the selected object fully in the PCB's view. For me, this helps with tired eyes at the end of the day. The layer drawing order provides a means for specifying the ordering of the various PCB layers being displayed. The default ordering works well for most applications, but you can try changing it if you're curious to see what it looks like. The next group of icons for Board Insight include Display, Modes, and Color Overrides. These provide the user with more options to drive the PCB view. Under the Display category, the available single layer modes is a very useful option for the display settings, and I would recommend checking all three to allow you to cycle through them while viewing the PC board. To cycle through them while viewing the board, hold the Shift key and tap the S key. One feature from the Board Insight mode settings is the Display Heads Up information. This provides a live display with various categories of information listed in the Visible Display Modes table, and that corresponds to the current mouse position. I generally do not enable the heads-up display. I find it a little distracting, but some find it very helpful. If I need it while I'm working on a PC board, I simply hold the Shift key down and click on the H key, and that toggles the display on and off. One preference that you may want to modify to help with DRC error tracking is the DRC violation display, where you can enable the various DRC errors to be highlighted by the green overlay that we saw previously. I generally use the defaults, but you may consider having others highlighted when using online DRC, such as maximum v-account when you're working with a high-speed net. The last group of preference settings we will look at are for interactive routing. There's a lot going on here, and I would suggest starting with the settings you see. 
That said, the general categories deserve some discussion, starting with routing conflict resolution. Here we have a number of options for the routing behavior while adding tracks to the PC board. I generally do not recommend the ignore obstacles or the stop at first obstacle, as they can cause issues by their very nature. Ignore obstacles allows you to route willy-nilly and ignores things like shorts. This can allow initial routing, but then there is the cleanup that's needed afterwards, and most importantly, you must run DRC afterwards. The stop at first obstacle is a helpful option in that it stops the routing when you encounter any obstacle. I generally rely on seeing the routing stopping or trying to get around the blockage with this not checked. That way it doesn't end the routing that you are trying to do. The current mode shows which of the above modes are currently active for routing. The interactive routing options provide the user with the ability to direct the tracks as they are being laid down. I generally only use the 90 on 45 restriction and automatically terminate routing options to speed up the process of manual track placement. I avoid the any angle kind of routes as they might become a manufacturing issue depending on the angles that get generated. One most useful option is the automatically remove loops and the subcategory of remove net antennas. These can help with the rerouting of nets by eliminating duplicate net connections that are made redundant due to adding new tracks. I do on occasion uncheck the remove loops option. This allows me to place parallel tracks on different layers for things like power or when I was creating a 3D antenna for a customer design. Just remember to uncheck it if you need to rework those nets with duplicate tracks. The routing gloss effort is a helpful feature allowing user-drawn tracks to be smoothed or glossed when being added. I generally start with the strong setting and progress to weak and sometimes off as I fine-tune the layout and need to add small segments that may be viewed as non-optimal and glossed out by the higher gloss settings. One example where I set it to off was when I was creating and tuning the PCB antenna I mentioned earlier. The other settings you may explore using the F1 key to dive deeper. For now, these preferences will be enough to get us going on the PC board. This concludes Module 14, Introduction to the PCB, where we looked at preferences.